Hello Hornby fans and welcome to Signal Box, a new monthly show where I'll be taking a look at some of our products and I'll be speaking to the people behind our models. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on an episode and we are starting this series out with a bang as we look through the mid-year additions joining our range. Mr Hornby himself, Simon Kohler, will be joining us and we have a very special competition that you won't want to miss. I'm Mike, we're Hornby and welcome to Signal Box. We're excited to be adding several new products to our range. By now, you'll have had a chance to look through our website, but for those of you that haven't, let's take a look at the 14 products joining our range. First up, we're adding to our popular Terrier range with the 48 Leidenhall. Built at Brighton Works during December 1876 at a cost of around £1,875, 48 Leidenhall was allocated to New Cross from 9th of December 1876. But when the Great Eastern Metropolitan and District Railways took greater control of running East London line services during the mid-1880s, the locomotive was transferred to Eastbourne for the Hailsham and Lewes local services. Moved on to Portsmouth in 1890, 48 Leidenhall worked the East South Sea and Hailing Island branch line services until August 1901, when the locomotive was relegated to the LB and SCR duplicate list. Sporting an improved engine green, the Leidenhall Terrier will be available in both DCC ready and DCC fitted. Next up is another one for the Terrier collectors amongst you, with the W10 Cows. Numbered as 69 and named Peckham, the Isle of Wight Central Railway took possession of the locomotive on 18th of April 1900, and it retained this combination until 1925, two years after being taken into Southern Railway stock. Repainted into Maunsell Green and given the running number of W10, in October 1928 the locomotive received the name Cows, which it retained until May 1936 when it was recalled into the mainland to be stored, then robbed for parts before finally being scrapped in March 1949. Available in both DCC ready and DCC fitted, this is a must have for Terrier fans. Now we know Terriers are popular, but let's take a look at some of the new wagons heading into our range. We have two new intermodal wagons for you. The KFA intermodal wagon with tip hook rail livery. This model does not come with a container and it is an era 10 model. We also have the KFA intermodal wagon two ux livery. Container will be included and the model is an era 11 model. But we're not finished there as we have another two new wagons to add to your layout. The MHA Coalfish Ballast Wagon in EWS livery comes in both a three pack and a single. Both products are era 9 models and will look great on a layout. Following our well-received Coca-Cola Christmas train set, we're adding new Coca-Cola products to our railroad range. We have a tank wagon and a box van. Both come in famous Coca-Cola red liveries and with both coming in under £15, these will be a great addition for any collector. The Class 156 in a BR Provincial livery. A two-car set 156401 comprising DMS number 57401 and DMSL number 52401 was the first of the class to enter service. Being built in November 1987 and sent to the RTC at Derby in December for type testing and evaluation. The unit entered revenue earning service at Norwich Crown Point and working East Anglia to North West Express services. DCC ready, the BR Provincial Class 156 comes in a sprinter blue and grey livery. Last, but by no means least, we have the new Mark III Network Rail Coaches joining our range. Three coaches will be available, the Staff Coach 977984, Conference Coach 975814, and a Test Coach 977993. Era 10 models, these coaches will stand out on your layout with the Network Rail yellow liveries. So there you have it. That's the 14 products that will be joining our range. What did you think? Will you be adding any to your layout? Let us know in the comments below. Up next, we've got Mr. Hornby himself, Simon Kohler, as we go inside the station. Okay, so I'm joined by uh, Marketing and Product Development Director, Simon Kohler. Um, thanks for being here. All right, Mike. And yep. today, we're going to be talking about the bullied coaches that we have currently available. Yeah, the uh, 59 full ones, yeah. Like to tell us a little bit more. Well, um, the, the people watching this probably know much more about uh, the heritage of these coaches than I do, actually. I know um, there are 18 sets of these produced by the Southern Railway, 
and consisted of uh, three coach per set. Um, based on the, cha the chassis of these coaches were based on the Maltzell uh, chassis. Uh, and um, as I say, there are 18 sets. They ran in sets of three. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, in, uh, as far as I'm aware, they, they probably, the, the, the rakes, if you like, the, were run, run as um, six coach mm -hmm. trains, although obviously some probably run in three. Um, commuter based um, and ran really from, from the 30s right through uh, to the 60s, really, to the, uh, um, probably the end of steam. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be probably the end of steam. So, um, yeah, a, a long history. There were some changes which we've managed to capture and the difference between the Southern, as you call it here, mm -hmm. and, and BR versions. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, um, interesting, interesting history. Um, it's it's, it's a, a, a range of coaches that was, if you like, missing from our uh, range, because we'd already uh, produced the L&ER, and, okay. uh, uh, with, with, and Great Western this year, and of course LMS uh, previous year. So, yeah, all, all in all, this, this is sort of adds that missing link to, um, to commuter travel. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. And they're obviously extremely highly detailed. Uh, yes, and yes, they are. In fact, um, they're, they're, uh, quite honestly, they're, they are beautifully, <laughs> beautifully done. Um, the, the, the vents here on, on the top... Uh, I had to look twice because I, I actually thought they were moulded on, but clearly they are not. They're all fitted on by by hand. Um, the the grab rails uh, on this side, if I can pick it up. But if you if you look at these grab rails, these are all separately fitted mm -hmm. on the end here, um, or individually printed, and then you've got again grab rails and railing there fitted separately. On this end, you can see the piping, oh, yeah, yeah. the uh, water piping along there, um, and um, they're sprung buffered as well. Oh. So, um, yeah, it's really, really superbly done. Um, and when when it's come to um, when it's come to actually um, tooling these up, um, it, it is fair to say, and as I said earlier, that they're, they're based the chassis are based on the Mortal coaches. Mm -hmm. But it isn't just a straight lift. There were subtle differences which um, we have uh, captured uh, on on these models. Yeah, brilliant. Mm. So grab grab on while you can. I suppose. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, we 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 produced because they, they they ran the way they did in in, in sets like this. Uh, we produced um, several sets, so you, you you can make if you're modelling Southern, you can run several sets, mm -hmm. uh, put two sets together or whatever, uh, and uh, do the same with BR. Because in later BR periods, as you, as you see here, they, they were made up of two brakes, and if you like, a comp, mm -hmm. um, and in later periods, towards the end of their life, I think they, they ran either in five or eight sets, or, or eight coach sets towards the end. Okay. Um, but that would be purely BR. But, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, I think, I think they're absolutely yeah, yeah. stunning. They do look yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stunning green. Um, yeah, get your hands on one while you can, really. Is yeah. Uh, I think this is, this is um, again, this is, it, this is what I like about this business. And I like, you know, what, what the uh, guys do in the development. Um, they, they do go the extra mile. I mean, the, I haven't mentioned the interior. The interior is... Yeah. Lovely. I mean, day, days gone by, of course, you had a single moulding in there and a single colour. Oh, really? But um, without double-checking, it looks as if some of the interior has actually been sprayed. Um, so, it, it, you know, the, these are, you know, miniature, miniature um, vehicles done to a very, very high degree of detail. And uh, obviously today we've been talking about the uh, mid yeah, range editions. Yes. Is yeah. there anything that you can tell us about? Anything future coming out maybe um, next year? No. Okay. okay <laughs> there you go. Nice, nice and simple. Um, well, thank you so much for, for telling us a little bit more and thanks for being here. No, no, it's fine. As I say, look at, um, th there's a lot more information I'm sure uh, is available, a lot more than I can carry in my head. You can find it all on our website or 
including the catalogue. So, yeah, don't take my word for it. <laughs> Go and have a look at these, and you know, you judge for yourself. Right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. If you'd like to know more about our bullied coaches, head over to our monthly blog, Engine Shed, and read the latest edition. To celebrate our first episode of Signal Box, we are giving away a very special prize, a Hornby Club membership. Included in the membership, you'll receive a collector's pin, a quarterly magazine, exclusive discounts, including the Wainwright H-Class, plus a free 040 Loco. To be in with a chance of winning, all you have to do is click the link in the description below and answer the following question. When did the Leadenhall Terrier enter service? Entries will close at midnight on the 12th of June and the winner will be announced in the next edition of Signal Box. So there you have it. That's the first episode of Signal Box. Now we are just starting out, so we'd love to know your thoughts. Maybe there's something you'd like to see in a future edition. Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to know any more information about any of the products featured in today's show, head over to hornby.com and you can also read our monthly blog, Engine Shed. From me to you, thank you so much for joining me this episode. And until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next stop.